Hello and welcome to this new lesson, which is about printing and exporting your map. As you can see, we were, or I'm starting more or less with the setup from the previous session. So we have a lot of layers in there, roads and streets, rivers, surface water and land use. I've used um, um, a rule-based render for the symbology. So there, these are my rules. So I've added a new rule will fall rural and small. That means that I have area less than 605,000 square meters. And I have applied a simple fill combined with a point pattern fill a symbology for the water or for the surface water area. You can see it over here. Uh, I still have the rivers marked in blue. I have the roads and streets and the places according to our naming scheme. So how to create a print version or a printed version of our map? First of all, you need to remember QGIS is at the moment it is a map canvas. So it is a composition of geometry, attributes, styles, and so on. And um, we could make a screenshot, of course, but a map consists of even more elements. It should have a title, some sort of legend, and so on. So, therefore, Q QGIS comes with a map composer. And this is here hidden in the layout manager. So, go in here and we will create a new layout manager, uh, a new layout. Type empty. All right, click on OK and say swell and done. This comes up, plain and simple, Dyna 4 page, horizontal, so uh, not portrait mode, landscape mode. And there are some tools here, we will go through them, and there are some tools up and above. So this is just a piece of paper, right, at the moment. So we have a layout, we have some item properties, and we have some guides. Let's have a look on the layout. There's a snapping tolerance, so if we place something up here, um, it should snap to the items. Then we have an export resolution. If you would like to have quite high quality uh, maps and um, prints, just increase as well. It could take some time then for the exporting to finish, of course, um, but it will, it will uh, be beneficial to the quality of the print. So what we will do now, we will create a new, or we will add a new map to the layout. Just click there. We will leave some space for the title and just click and drag the map. What it takes now is exactly the, it is, or it takes exactly the same layout we can see here and put it to the map. So let's go back to the Svelendam um, layout manager and here it is. So we have our layers visible. Um, there is a new item here called map one, which has layout, item properties, and so on. The first thing we need to keep in mind, okay, well, if I see a map that is printed out, it should have a scale bar or something that makes it easier for me to read and understand the dimensions of the map, right? And the scale bar tends to have a scale. And now we can see that the scale is somehow crooked. It is 48,000. 48,000 something. So either we will switch over to 50,000. Let's have a look in there. 50,000. Oh, we are zooming out a little bit, but that's fine for the moment, right? We can leave it like it is. Or we can go in to 40,000, right? It really depends on what you would like to see. If it's more about the surrounding of Svelendam and its, uh, and its location, then maybe go with a, a, a larger scale, like 50,000. If you would like to have an in-depth look on Swellendam itself, maybe go with 30,000, right? Just to um, make it more obvious what the map is all about. We will go for this example of 40,000, so we have some items from, from the surrounding on the map as well. But Swellendam is now on the upper left corner somewhere, but the map should be about Swellendam, right? So it should be somewhere in the middle. Um, therefore, we can use this one, this tool called Move Item Content. With this, you're not moving the, the, the map frame, but you're moving the map content. 
it's a bit harder for 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 beginners to deal with this. And you can see that the uh, that the uh, the labels are still or oh, it still tries to place the labels. So I'm still trying to find the end of this surface water body. Oh, let's have a look. Maybe we should go in there and go with 30,000. That was a mistake. <laughs> Let's go with 40,000 and we're fine. So I will leave it like it is. It is just for showing purpose, right? And you should keep in mind, so if you, if you switch here, look at the scale the scale is changing due to the fact that we are having that we are trying to place it on the plane so um it's not static keep that in mind as mentioned we would like to have a title right this is a tongue text function add a new label well let's try this one right now we can see that the label here is really small you first alter the main properties which is the text content to swell them now we will change the item position and this and the frame and we will adjust the font right so the font is now something like this let's go to well, let's try this one Muna bold and of course, as it is a title, it should be big. Let's have a look here. Great, so we'll end on. So go back to the item properties. So we'll end on. The font color should not be this black. And vertical alignment middle, so the text is aligned inside the box in the middle and inside in the center. So left, let's have a look here on the alignment settings. These are alignments to the boxes. And so let's have a look here on swell and then we will align it to the left. Both aligned to the left. No, there. Now they are all aligned on the left, but as the map spans the whole item, uh, the whole page, we will align it both in the center. So Swell and Dam is now in the center, or the legend, uh, the entry the label entry here is in the center. Now we will add a scale wall, as I've described earlier. Add a new scale wall to the layout, add items, add scale bars here as well. Once you have enabled this, the cursor changes and you just place it somewhere. Now there's a scale ball. It looks a little bit odd due to the fact that it has such a big box. We will place it down here. Once again, maybe have a look on the on the fonts and the colors. Fill color. We'll go with 20%. And the line color will be 20% as well. And there is our scale bar. And now let's go back over to the legend. Once again, I've chosen this entry, but you can go with that item and add legend as well. So this is a legend here. Let's go over there. And now you can see that we have some items covered here some line items covered here and something is odd here right i cannot resize the content but let's first concentrate on the items first of all it is called auto update that means it is always looking on the project and what layers are there so we will disable the auto update because we don't have an osm standard um, in the background right so i'll remove that then we will go with Nantius. I don't really need this header, so we will go with 
type hidden. And then there's rivers. Rivers, I've added to the, the attribute or the, the feature counter in the legend item. And here I can just simple switch it off. I don't want to have the numbers of rivers here. And now this looks already quite good, right? So let's place it above the scale bar. And it should have a title, of course. Legend. So we have here now a legend item. We have a scale bar. We have a title. We have a map. What is missing? Well, sometimes you can rotate a map, right? So let's have a look here on the map. And here is the map rotation. Especially if you have some sort of items that are not placed. Um, interesting view um, that are not placed according to the map orientation so they are a little bit um, crooked on the map you can play around with the map rotation and decide to rotate the map at its uh, to rotate the map and um, once you have done this you should still add somehow a north facing arrow that the should be not that big um, so that the user is able to identify where is north and where is south. That's that. Let's have a look here on the map. Maybe we, we can zoom it and um, maybe we can uh, rotate the map. Oh, come on. Map rotation. Let's go with 30 degrees. Hmm. Why not? Right. No, I don't want to use this one. I would like to pan the map. So once you have done this, you need to enable the north arrow again. And go with this tool set here. And now we have a north indicator, right? So we have rotated the map, we have a legend, we have a scale bar, we have a north indicator, we have a name, and you can also add, of course, some sort of title, or person who has created the map, and so on. But now we will, we are somehow finished with our initial map. That's cool. Now let's have a look here on the options to print it out. First of all, we can ready to go use the print layout function that takes the map put it to the printer queue and off you go but there are other options as well first of all export as image if you would like to store it as in tiff png whatsoever use this one then we have the export as svg tends to be useful for designers and if you would like to recreate or alter the alter the um the vectorial data behind that image so this whole image will be stored as an svg so you can have access to the vertices as well and then there is export as pdf if you just lost, like to print it out later on or put it on the web or somewhere else we'll go with export as pdf for the moment as well done pdf looks great and now we have some options as well. Always export as vectors, append georeference information. That is, uh, I think there's a thing called GeoPDF, so that the georeference information will be added to the to the data set it's, uh, to to the PDF, and you you still we, you will not lose the spatial information. Export RDF metadata. We will keep it as it is, and yeah, great. So save. There we go click on that double click on this one and here we have our map in Dyna 4 great thank you very much for watching take care goodbye